Hello and welcome to the second video in our statistical reasoning series. Today we're going to look at standard deviation. A standard deviation, when this is our symbol for it by the way, uh, sigma, so you can just, that's how I draw them. I kind of start at the circle part and I work my way around. Anyway, a standard deviation is a measure of how spread out a data set is around the mean. A low standard deviation means the data is close to the mean. A high standard deviation means the data is scattered further away from the mean. So if you have a low standard deviation, you've got numbers that are bunched closely together. If you have a higher standard deviation, that means they're more spread out. So a standard deviation of 2.34 means the data range is smaller or more closely grouped than a standard deviation of 4.24. Now, the formula to determine a standard deviation is as follows. So again, remember this is our standard deviation symbol, uh, is equal to the square root of the variance. All right, now the variance, you might be wondering, what is the variance? The variance is the average of the squared differences from the mean. So the average of squared differences from the mean simply mean that we have to find the difference between the, a data value and the mean, find that difference and square it, and you do that where all the data values. Um, and then you find the average of that. Anyway, so you can break it down to these three steps. Step one, find the mean of the data. Step two, determine the square of the deviation or the difference of each data item from the mean. And then step three, we find the mean of the squares of, this, of these deviations. Now, uh, a little kind of extra fact here. What I'm talking about here in this lesson is population standard deviation. Just in general, I'm using population. There's another one called sample. So I'll put that over there. And sample is done very similar. Um, the only difference is we divide by n minus 1 when we get to uh, this step here. So what we're going to look at, though, is population. And when you go on in um, a college or university course, you may get into uh, more statistics. They might talk about population versus sample standard deviations. Anyway, back to this. I just felt like I had to kind of clue you in on that. Um, so finally, so to calculate standard deviation, we can use the following formula, and I got it right here, um, that standard deviation is equal to the square root of the sum of those or sorry, of the average of those uh, deviations. Now, you don't have to actually find it by hand often. We're just going to do one example just so you can see where it comes from because we're going to use a calculator. The calculator is much quicker. Um, and that's why we want to use a calculator, right? It's just because this for speed. So we can take really big questions and uh, compute these answers really quickly using a calculator. It'd be a lot slower by hand, but at least it kind of you'll know where these numbers are coming from. So without further ado, let's do this one question by hand. And the next two examples we're going to do using technology. So you can see here, it says Cali researched the price of two different brands of jeans at four stores. Okay, this is gene A right here. We got gene B right there. So there's four different prices from four different stores. In A, we want to determine the standard deviation of gene prices. So just how much do they kind of differ? And then in B, which brand of jeans had a more consistent price over the four stores? So that's one thing I haven't mentioned yet, is that standard deviation is good in, um, well, it tells you different things depending on the situation. But one thing it can tell you in most situations is it's just how consistent uh, the data values are. So, um, and what I mean by that is that if the data values are really close together, they'd be quite consistent. Meaning if these prices are pretty much the same price each time, it'd be, you'd think it's a consistent price. And their standard deviation will be super low and it will reflect that. Now, if these prices vary a lot, then you'd say they're not consistent. And the standard deviation will be much larger. And then that would kind of tell you it's not consistent. So how, that's how that works. Let's get into calculating these uh, numbers, though. So I can, you can see I have that chart in the top right corner. Um, there's no kind of pretty way to do it. You just kind of take your time and kind of go through things. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to find the uh, average of gene A. Okay? And the way we do that is we just simply add up those prices and divide by the amount there. So, yeah, I'm gonna be, it's going to be a rare quiet time for me. As I write this stuff out, and then now divide it, there is four of them. So what I got was uh, 45.87. 
Okay, so that is my average for gene A. The next part, what we have to do is we got to take each data value, so each gene price, compare it to this average and find the difference between them. Once we find that, what we'll end up doing do is what we'll end up doing is squaring that number, okay? So, what am I talking about? Well, I'm going to go always my larger number first, so 45.99 where am I getting that from? I'm getting that right from here, that first data value, everybody. I'm going to subtract my average. And what I get is a difference, and it's 0 0.12. What I will always do then, I'm going to square this. So I guess I could have written that up here too, right? But that would have been confusing if I would have written it then. But the way this formula works is I always square it. And then now I get 0 0.0144. And I'm going to save that number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that for the next three as well, and then I'm going to take all four of those numbers and find the average of that. So that is what you can look forward to, everybody. Okay, again, I said I'm going to always put the larger number first. So 46.49 subtract my average. We know now that we're going to be squaring that. So once I do that subtraction, I get 0 0.3844, and I want to square that. Oh, I'm sorry. I already gave you my answer there. Um, that should be 0 0.62, and then I square that, and that gets to 0 0.3844. Okay, move on to the next one. Uh, so now my average will come first because it's the larger of the two numbers. How do I know that? I just compared the numbers. Oh, yeah, we're squaring that. Okay, so I get 0 0.88 squared, and then 0 0.7744 is my final answer there. And I have one more to do, 45.99. That's coming first because it is slightly larger than 45.87. Going to square that. 0 0.0144 oops I I did it again you guys sorry about that that is 0 0.12 is my difference and then once I square that I get 0 0.0144 okay so step one is find my average step two is find this the difference squared okay step three Step three, and now what I'm going to do, I'll say that's, whoa, that looks like a GA, but that's supposed to be my uh, standard deviation symbol, but my pen's acting kind of funny on me again. But now step three is when I actually do my calculation. So this looks funny, but what this is trying to say to you guys is that that is the uh, sum of all the differences, okay, that we just found. So really step two, and then we're going to find the average of those numbers. So I'll divide it by the amount there. And then we're going to take the square root of it. So this part in here, what we what this is, is actually the variance. So we're going to calculate the variance, to then take the square root of it. So I go 0 0.0144 plus 0 0.3844 plus 0 0.7744 plus 0 0.0144, okay? Now, why am I doing that? Because it says, let me just get a different color. Right here, it says that that sideways, I guess I'll say three. It's a Greek letter. It means it's the summation, so to add these things up. So we want to add all those differences squared. So that's why I'm adding those things up. And then I'm going to divide by the amount there are. That's what n's meaning. So that's four. Oops, I just wrote n again. That's four. And then I'll take the square root of that. Okay, so that number ends up being 0 0.2969. So when I add all those things, so when I add all those numbers up and divide them by four, I get 0 0.2969. And then when I take the square root of that, I end up getting 0 0.54. And that is my standard deviation for this first set of numbers. All right. So we got our first answer, 0 0.54. Now let's look at the next one. And I'm going to write the 0 0.54 right here. 
and I guess uh, standard deviation of A. And again, sorry, I'm making those look like G's. Okay, so we do the exact same thing, everybody. Step one, the mean. So I'm just going to add up all those numbers. 46.59. Here's the nice thing, everybody. You, I'm, I'm not, I doubt, I'm having trouble speaking. Okay, in my class, I'm not going to make you uh, find the standard deviation by hand on, a, on exam. You'll have to do it in your assignment, maybe, maybe on an in-class or a chapter check, but not on your, uh, not on your test. So take a little bit of pressure off. And then for the video, this is the last time we're doing it by hand. Then we're, we're going to use technology next. Um, and there's varying types of technology you can use. But anyway, they're really quick to work through. So back to my question. I'm adding up all my prices. So where did I get those numbers from? I got those numbers from right over here, everybody, okay? So just in case so we're on the same page. So I'll put a little B there. This is the average of B. Okay, so um, the average ends up being 45.72. Okay, next step, I'm going to compare all those gene prices to my average, find the difference between them, and then square that difference. All right, so I'm always putting my big, uh, the bigger number first. So 46.59 minus 45.72. So it's not that this is difficult, it's just slow. So now, I only am giving you four pieces of data. Like this is not going to be a very accurate um, standard deviation. Whenever you're looking for standard deviations, whenever you're working with stats, really, you want large data sets. We want like way more than this. Let's say 40 instead of four. And that would take a long, long time to do by hand, right? So that's where with technology, you'll see when we're doing using technology, the data sets will make much larger so we can get better answers. And then again, the technology will uh, enable me to move fast still. Anyway, back to this. 0 0.87 squared works out to 0 0.7569. Okay, next one. 45.99 minus 45.72. We're going to square that. Okay, I get 0 0.27 squared. And when I get when I square that, I get 0. 0729. Okay, the third one. 45.72 subtract 45.29. Gonna square it. I end up getting 0 0.43. And I'll square that. 0.1849. All right, final one. I know, again, I'm a broken record. I know that this is not fast, but hopefully it's not too bad to do. You may just be fast forwarding this, right? Because you're so bored. I'll never know. So don't feel bad if you are. Anyway, back to this. I'd get 0 0.73 as a difference. Once I square it, 0.5329. Okay, so that was that's all the squared differences. So my third step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to find the average of all the squared differences, which is really I'm going to find my. Um, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble drawing that symbol. If I drew it up here, you see it's easy. If I get to the corners of my screen, for some reason my pen doesn't work as nice. Anyway, I'm going to find what I just talked about there. So 0.7569 plus 0 0.0729, plus 0 0.1849, plus 0 0.5329. Okay, and I want to find the average of that, so I add all of that up and divide by 4, and then what I do with that average is I take the square root of it, and then that, would, that ends up being my standard deviation. So, um, my average ends up being 0 0.3869. So that's, just so we all know, that's my variance. When you take the square root of the variance, that gives you the, the standard deviation. So the square root of that is 0 0.62. All right, so uh, my first question was, 
was simply to find the um, the standard deviations. So, sorry, I'm kind of I'm hiccuping here, everybody. So my standard deviation for the for, for gene A was 0 0.54, for gene B it was 0 0.62, and then part B was just which was more consistent. So remember, consistent means which prices were um, you know more closely grouped or more similar. So our standard deviation will tell you that the lower the standard deviation. The lower the standard deviation, it, the uh, more consistent the price is because the more closely grouped those numbers are. So gene A would be the more consistently priced. It'd have more of the same price. All right, so that is how you do it by hand. Um, not a tough process, but it's slow. So that leads us to technology. Now, I have given you just a website that you can use. Um, there's so many different ways you can find this. If you have a graphing calculator, graphing calculators will always have a little program in there that'll help you find standard deviations. There, I'm sure there are free apps that you can download. Like I know there are free apps you can download. Um, it depends on the device you're using. So maybe you're using an iPhone, you might use one thing if you're using an Android device. So it might have to be a different little app. So I'm gonna steer away from those. Um, everybody has the internet. So you can just go to this internet site Nothing pretty about this site, everybody, but it works. And again, we're going to be finding the population standard deviation, okay? Not the sample, but the population. Once again, if you wanted to find the sample, you simply have to, when you divide, you divide, instead of dividing by n, you divide by n minus 1. Um, and these calculators, they'll all, you just have to figure out what their notation is, but often they'll have like a, an s or something for sample. Anyway, we're finding population, so let's focus on that. Um, what you do now, so it says three groups of students record the numbers of books and uh, read for a literacy fundraiser. So on this easy calculation website, all you'll have to do is enter these groups of numbers one at a time. So w just separated by a comma, I'd enter this and then I hit calculate and it's just going to spit out the number for me. So it says determine the mean and standard devi deviation for each group. I'll stay with the red. So I'll go, you know, X bar sub or subscript one. I'm having trouble speaking. Um, anyway, that simply means the average of group one. And the average ends up being, once you plug all this in, just 11.1. .1. And then now the standard deviation, you'll be able to read from the list. Again, look at the population one, 2.18. And it's going to be that easy, you guys. Then clear out that list. Go type in the next list. Again, don't put a space or anything, just a comma. So the second average ends up being 9.89. And the second standard deviation ends up being 1.45. Now I'm just rounding these off to two decimal places. It says near 10th though. So why don't I adjust my numbers? Sorry about that, everybody. So this would be 2.2. And this one would be 1.5. All right. I'll do it properly this next, this third time. So the standard, sorry, the average for that third group ends up being 10.2. And then the third standard deviation ends up being 1.8. All right, so like how quick was that? That would have taken us an hour to do it um, by hand. Anyway, uh, which group, group performed best? Explain your answer. Now, really, this is kind of an opinion question, you guys. I wouldn't likely ask you something quite like this on a test. Um, I, I could ask you something similar, but I would word it in a way that you'd have to actually use your understanding of standard deviation. Anyway, um, what group performed best? Well, again, really whatever you want to say here. Um, the average, you know, a lot of people would say average is the best. So, you know, group one would work, but, or perform best. But what we know is that, uh, that average for every high number, you might have a really low number. So really not everybody in that group might've performed well. Now, standard deviation, that tells us just really um, how consistent these readers were. So the group with the lowest standard deviation, that's going to tell you that those people, they all they read a closer amount of books. So there wouldn't be such a large spread between books. Um, so I'll go with that one right now. And I can see also that, you know, the averages are all fairly similar because really, if we're talking about books, everyone, you don't read 9.89 books, you'd read 10 books, right? So um, that's right in line with all the other averages. And I have a smaller standard deviation, which means I had have more people in my group that read close to 10 books. So I will go with B or group two, I'm sorry. 
Okay, our final example. Um, Jerome McGinley's points for the Calgary Flames from 1997 to 2010 are shown. Determine the mean and standard deviation of the points Jerome McGinley earned from 1997 to 2010. Top one decimal place. That should be two one decimal place. Let's get rid of that. Okay, once again, I'm not doing it by hand, people. I'm just going to that easy calculation or using an app, whatever you want to do. Again, it's population standard deviation that we're finding in this video. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. So my average, once I plug all that stuff in, hit calculate, would be 73.5. Okay, so he scored on average 73.5 points. Um, and again, you know, you wouldn't actually score 73.5 points, but on average it is, right? So then now the standard deviation for his career in Calgary, not his whole playing career because he's still playing today, but that ends up being into one decimal place, 18.3 uh, points. So that's saying that, you know, he could be plus or minus 18 points depending on that season, right? Now B says determine the effect on the mean standard deviation when the two lowest data values are removed from the data set. So basically remove the lowest two and recalculate. Okay, so 32 is rookie year. That's lowest. And what's next? Looks like 51, right? So his first two years, maybe there's injury, maybe he didn't play as much, or maybe he was just a young guy, so he didn't score as often. Anyway, once I remove that, I then recalculated his average. That worked out to now 79.4 points. And then his standard deviation, 12.7 uh, points. Okay, so now to determine the effect, and you can see that this part, um, sorry, you can't see what I'm pointing at, but his average, it went up, so that's a really good thing. So once you take those low numbers away, your average goes up. I mean, that makes sense, right, everybody? And then now the other kind of nice thing is that his standard deviation went down, meaning that he had more seasons where he scored closer to that 79.4. Um, so now his standard deviation is only 12.7 or if I'd round to 13 points, so that's much lower. So by removing those low marks or low um, points, his average went up and his standard, de standard deviation went down. So just good things happen for our boy Jerome. Okay, so summary. Standard deviation tells you how scattered or clustered a data set is. Now just to give you a quick visual of that, if we pretend that's just kind of, that's just a line, okay everybody, and every little tick mark Let's say this is my average, and you can see I kind of have these random tick marks. These are just random data values that I'm not going to put numbers to. But let's say there are six data values, and they would all average out to the middle here, okay? So this would be one data set. Let's just make another visual here, and here's my average. And there's my data values for the second one. Oh, you want it, I had six in the first, let's go six in the second. You can see it's way more clustered here. So in this case, we'd have a low standard deviation. In this one, it's really spread out, right? So in this one, we'd have a higher standard deviation. Okay? It's often, it's got, it's relative, right, when you compare it. So it's higher than the one in the red. Anyway, I hope that visual helps a little bit. Um, a low standard deviation means the data is clustered, while a high standard deviation means the data is scattered or spread out. Um, standard deviation is often used as a measure of consistency. All right, so feel free to rewatch that video because I know that uh, doing it by hand, uh, that's new to you. It's not tough, but there's some steps to it, so it might, you know, take some memorization. Anyway, I hope that made sense. If it didn't, talk to myself or your teacher. Otherwise, have a great night.